Hi, you guys. I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. And today I want to talk to you guys about why Jeremy Grantham says U.S. stocks are in a magnificent bubble. We've been discussing this a lot, man. The U.S. stocks are in a gigantic bubble. And legendary investor Jeremy Grantham says it's even crazier than the great market crash of 1929 that preceded the Great Depression. If that didn't get your attention, you probably don't have any money in the stock market. In a recent interview on CNBC, Grantham said that the end of the stock market bubble is kind of like killing off a vampire. And we are headed for a major crash. So I want to take a look at this interview with you guys and then just give you my thoughts. So let's dig in. I spoke with uh, investor and GMO co-founder Jeremy Grantham about the state of the market, which he's been warning about, of course, for quite some time. I began by asking him about his most recent comments uh, that uh, we had dangerously overpriced assets in the U.S. And if he thinks we're in the biggest bubble he's witnessed in his entire career. It's not as big as Japan in 89, but it's bigger than anything in the U.S., and that's partly because it includes real estate, bonds, of course, stocks, and commodities. They're, they're all overpriced. By the way, when, let me stop this clip right there. When Grantham says that it's, it's not as big as Japan, you may not be aware of this, but the Japanese stock market dropped and stayed down for almost 20 years uh, from that point. So um, that's a really serious accusation right there that it's it's in the ballpark of Japan, not as big as Japan. Maybe it won't last as long, but certainly gigantic. OK, let's go on. Oh, and also, by the way, Grantham's worth listening to because he called the 2000 crash, the 2007 crash, and he's really good at long term investing. So take take a listen. And what kind of metrics give you confidence that that, that is the case? Well, pretty well, every metric you could use. The house price is a multiple of family income, which is higher today than it was at the peak of the housing bubble in uh, 06. And it's even higher than the US in Australia, Canada, England, Hong Kong, Shanghai, you name it. This is a global housing bubble. M more housing then than equities? It's more global, uh, the bubble in housing, than equities. Equities is magnificent, a magnificent bubble in the US, but strangely overseas, it's merely a routine bull market. It's overpriced, but uh, no big deal. Uh, but uh, real estate is... I'm gonna stop Jeremy right there for a quick second, um, because he was talking about the massive housing bubble that we're in right now being bigger than it was in 2007. And we got this amazing freeze up in assets that that created a gigantic drop in real estate. We won't see that again. Right. We're, we're fighting a different battle this time. What's going on now around the world that Grantham's talking about is that housing uh, bubble in China is just massive. Um, one of their major developers found themselves with three hundred and seventy billion dollars of debt that they couldn't pay. Um, this is more money out the door than exists in both Bank of America and um, I think USB or Wells Fargo combined. Um, gigantic amount of debt. And it's just one of many developers in China. There's several trillion. I think the latest ballpark number was five trillion dollars of, of assets that may not ever get paid back in China. And so that market is starting to react to that now. And it's one of the things that's bringing down Chinese stocks. So we don't know how it's going to come about, but we know that things have to reset. Well, let's go ahead and hear about the stock market. Uh, but uh, real estate is magnificently overpriced almost everywhere that has a real estate market that counts. And the bond market, of course, is, as Jim Grant would say, at a 6,000 year high uh, in terms of low interest rates and uh, high bond prices. By the way, if that makes you seem, if that sounds a little strange, that with interest rates very, very low, bond prices are very, very high. It's, it's essentially 
what happens when you try to sell a bond that you own. So if you put $10,000 into a U.S. Treasury bond and they're paying you 1%, you're getting a you're getting a hundred dollars a year. Um, and if interest rates go up to 5%, then everybody's getting $500 a year on that same bond. So your bond, instead of being worth 10,000 is now worth 2000 in order to produce that same $500 at 1%. So as bond prices go down, bond interest rates go down, those bonds are more and more valuable. And if bond prices go up, they become less and less valuable. And that's why, uh, the potential here is for a gigantic bond crash. So essentially that's, uh, I mean, the setup, which is that all the major asset groups are massively overpriced. Um, they have been jacked up aggressively by federal central bank intervention across the world, both in Europe and in the United States and other countries. And uh, in order to avoid depression or recession. And the end result here is that they are very unlikely to stay in this extremely tenuous position, extremely tenuous. So I think Grantham's got a real point, And that is that, you know, if it can't keep going up, then it's going to go down and we should be ready for that. So let's take a look at when this magnificent bubble that Jeremy's talking about. And of course, he's tongue in cheek. Magnificent is very scary. Um, when's this thing going to implode and how can we be ready for when this thing bursts, right? You joined me on Closing Bell in, in mid-June of 2020 and called it then the fourth. They've rallied pretty strong since then, 42% for the S&P 500 since that interview. So you knew it was going to be the real McCoy last year. You didn't know if it was going to break next Wednesday or, or a year later. But one by one, we've checked off every condition that a, that a glorious bubble needs in, in, in terms of crazy behavior. This has been crazier uh, by a substantial margin than 1929 and 2000, in my opinion. So uh, we've, we've met all of those conditions. So anytime now you can go. And the end of a, of a bubble is like uh, killing off a vampire. Okay, so <laughs> when's this magnificent bubble gonna crash, right? That That's pretty much the big question there. Uh, Jeremy certainly defined that and he can't say when it's going to crash. So as uh, his commentator said, things went up 40% since Jeremy made the first call. So what do we do? I mean, uh, one of the things that we're going to cover when you finally get around to taking our workshop is what to do if you're sitting in the market right now um, with certain tools that you can use that they can't use as institutional investors because they're too big but they're very effective in getting you out um, if you're sitting in mutual funds or ETFs before the next crash fully happens. And that's important. Um, secondly, what do you do if you're already uh, a, a solid rule one investor? Well, you do what Warren Buffett's doing, you do what I do, and you do what good investors are doing, and that is you're waiting in cash with a list of companies that you can't wait to buy when they go on sale. I'd say that's pretty important. And secondly, uh, Jeremy goes on at other interviews to suggest that you take a look at companies that are on sale. And if they're not in the United States, be willing to take a look other places. Uh, but the primary criteria right here is to get yourself into cash and just be prepared by knowing what you want to buy for when the market may crash. I mean, it could happen in a day. It could happen in a year. I don't know. And to, to get at that, I would say a good place to start is my stock market survival guide. You should you should take a look at that right away if you haven't already. So now I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts about Jeremy's interview? And are we headed, you know, toward a crash of this magnificent bubble? What do you think? So leave a comment below with your answer. I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching. Now go play. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about the current stock market bubble, hit the like button. Please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, just subscribe to my channel. And by the way, don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. It's good stuff. Thanks again for watching.